Rest Ness. I'm Jerry, and I'm going to be your tour guide today. The Rest Ness is located in the West End, 1050 Graf David Abernathy Boulevard, Southwest in Atlanta. This is a historic home. It is the first and the oldest house museum in Atlanta. And there are so many wonderful things here to see in this house. It's the home of George L. Harris, the man that preserved the Burr Rabbit stories. So come on in with me and I'm ready to show you the house. So this is the introductory room. Uh, this is where we start the tour of Georgetown Harris. And of course this room did not always look like this. Uh, this is what this room looked like. In fact, this is this room right here. This was a little small bedroom uh, at, uh, that was adjacent to the house. And after they started the renovations on the house, it ended up looking like this. So this is known as the East Park. This is the original uh, mailbox to the house. It became the Red's Nest because of this mailbox. The Harrises had nine children, and three of their children died very young, so the kids would always tell their friends they had a bird nest in the mailbox. But the neighbors were the ones that cornered the phrase, the rent's nest. And so people wanted to come out here and meet him, and the neighbors would always say, look for the house that has a mailbox with the rent's nest in it. That's where the Harris family lived. So in 1913, when this house became the first house museum in Atlanta, they decided to name it the rent's nest. This is the West Parlor. And this is where the Harris family did all their entertainment in this room right here. This is what it looked like when they lived here. That little round picture with the rabbit in it, here it is right here. This statue on this same table, here it is right here. So you are constantly going to hear about the fox and the rabbit because they are his main characters in the stories and they're his tricksters. Now this is the interesting room in the house right here because this is the family room. And in this room you will find family photos, you'll find a cartoon of President Theodore Roosevelt and Mr. Harris together at the White House. They became very, very good friends in this lifetime because uh, Roosevelt really is the one that initiated this house to become a museum. Uh, Mrs. Harris wanted to sell the house, she wanted to auction everything in this house off, but Roosevelt reminded her that if she sold this house, nobody would ever remember Mr. Harris because he was his books were never great sellers. And so he came here personally. He did the fundraiser for this house to become a house museum. He and Andrew Carnegie raised $25,000 for this house to become a house museum. This is Mrs. Harris. A photo of Mrs. Harris and her two oldest boys in this very room accepting that check for $25,000. The elephant tooth is another interesting thing in this room. Uh, Mr. Harris had the privilege of naming the very first elephant at Grant Park Zoo. He named her Cleo. And after the house became a museum, they sent it over here to become part of the museum. Here's an old photograph of his mother, Mary Harris. She never married. She never had any more children. And um, she came here at the age of 72 and lived out the rest of her life. Here's an interesting picture of Mr. Harris and Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie is the one that encouraged Mr. Harris to turn the house into a library at one point. I don't know exactly what year it was, but it became a museum at some point. So these are the children and the daughter-in-law. This is the daughter-in-law, Dorothy. She outlived all of them. She lived to be 97 years old. She died in 1996. Here he is with his very best friend, Jane Wickham Riley. He was a great writer and a poet. He wrote very interesting stories. And then these are the four boys. Julian and Lucian are the two boys they gave birth to in Savannah, Georgia. This is Evelyn. George Taylor Harris Jr. was married to Dorothy. The girls are Mildred and Lillian. And to me, this is the most interesting thing in the room because Mr. Harris, I always said that he got a little boost for animation because he was the very first author to give his animals a language. He dressed them up in human clothing. No other author had ever did that before. Rudolph Kipling, Jungle Book. We know Walt Disney was inspired by him because he used two of his stories for the Song of the South. And Mr. Harris got all his inspiration from a man named A.B. Frost, who later became a very good friend of his. I'm going to go to the girls' bedroom now. And the girls' uh, bedroom is sort of interesting. And what it does is give you the idea of what the women wore back in those days. And they wore the very long dresses. They were not allowed to show their ankles. So they had something called a petticoat mirror. 
and this is where the girls will stop after they got dressed to make sure that they had pulled down that top layer on their clothing to make sure their ankles were not showing. Um, they even played tennis in those long dresses. Now here's an old photograph of the house before they did all the renovations. Uh, the girls out on the tennis court in those long dresses um, playing tennis. Well, they're not playing tennis actually, but they are out on the tennis court with those in those long dresses. The hallway has an interesting story behind it too, because the stained glass windows that you see in the house came from St. Anthony Catholic Church. Mrs. Harris was a very devout Catholic. And when they moved into this neighborhood, there was not a Catholic church, so she allowed them to uh, have catechism classes in this house while they was building St. Anthony Catholic Church. So this is her secretariat. Uh, you could tell she was a very devout Catholic. She did all Mr. Harris correspondence from here also. Now these are most of Mr. Harris's books. He was a very prolific writer. Um, he thought at one point in his life he wanted to write like Edgar Allan Poe, so someone gave him a copy of The Raven. Of course, his great friend and illustrator, A.B. Frost, is there. Then Jane Wickham Riley and a few other authors are there. And then he encouraged other countries to have these stories translated into their own languages. So we have it in Japanese, Dutch, Russian, French, Czech, two Spanish books, and these was his first books here. When I say he was a prolific writer, I, I mean just that. Mr. Harris wrote about the Civil War, slavery, four sets of children, classical books, romance novels, and American history books that never sold. This is where Mr. Harris passed away, July the 3rd, 1908. He was 61 years old, and so we do not take people in that room. The crib was not in that when Mr. Harris passed away. The crib was placed there. Uh, around about 1945 and 1946, something like that. His children never used the crib, just his great-great-grandchildren and great-great-great-great-grandchildren used that crib. So when they became part of Atlanta, and they got running water, sewage, and all, this, all those good things, and one of the very first things the family wanted in this house was a bathroom. Now all of this used to be part of their back porch, and they added this bathroom onto the house around 1904 and 5, they got run, uh, after they got running water sewage. Um, only thing in there that's not uh, original is the commode. The tub and the sink are original to the house. This is the last room of the house, and this is my favorite room in the house. This is the dining room. And these are those same six children I showed you hanging on the wall. This is what the children looked like 40 years after Mr. Harris's death in 1948. At the request of Walt Disney, they went back to Turnwall Plantation where it all began for him, and they took that photograph. In 1948, they put Mr. Harris's face on the first edition three cent stamp and all those postcards that you see. The dining room table and chairs came from Sears and Roebuck. It is said they paid $25 for that dining room table and chairs. It's a beautiful table. And then this is my favorite piece in the whole house, the cabinet there. President Theodore Roosevelt and his second wife, Edith, gave that to the Harrises for an anniversary gift. And that ends our tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come by and see us. And I hope you tell your family and your friends about the Rinse Nest. Thank you so much for coming.